nine ten. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us on what we believe is a historic day in Tasmania in terms of the BRT team, which is the Booth Richardson Tiger team, uh, releasing today some video and images of what they believe, uh, with uh, the backing of uh, Nick Mooney, uh, is a um, Tasmanian tiger, a thylacine. Um, in the wild in southern Tasmania. Uh, and it all began and started the day. The story started with, uh, in the centre, uh, Greg Booth, and to his right, his father Joe, and on the <coughs> left, uh, Adrian Richardson, known to everybody as Richo. Uh, and Greg and his father uh, had a, uh, an amazing sighting in, uh, of um, a Tasmanian tiger. So, Greg, I'll just tell that story to the media, please. Yep, no problem. <coughs> Go. Yep, yep. Me and Dad was out looking at some old roads um, and old tracks. Um, we was, uh, it was probably three or four hours and we was about to head home and Dad said that he'd like to show me one more track. So we went down the road a little ways and into another track and then he showed me he stopped. <coughs> We went into the bush a little ways and then he showed me a old convict track. Um, I said to Dad, like, I wouldn't mind walking it. And Dad said he'll go back out to the ute and then drive up and meet me halfway down the track. Uh, when Dad went back out and started driving up the track, I was already on my way going up. Um, I could hear Dad yelling something out but I didn't know what it was. And I was looking up the track and I could see a big wind blowing down tree. It was sort of up, like, you know, if you know what I mean. <coughs> I got to about six to eight feet away from that tree and that's when the tiger first came out. Um, it had like a really big head, really long snout nose like. Um, it had a scar up here. Its ears were not so much pointed but really <coughs> flared. Um, it had white around the eyes, really dark brown eyes and set well back in the skull of the animal. Um, I then noticed the front legs of the animal and it was sitting down at this time too, this animal actually looked at me. I was within eight feet of the animal, eight to nine feet, but I wasn't that far. Um, so he sat down and I noticed his paws and that and he had fur over his paws. You could see stripes on the animal, that was no problem. Um, the tail on the animal went down and it had a bit of a curl right at the end. Uh, the tail had a little tusk at the end of it, probably about three centimetres long. Um, again, the tail was very little fur on it, but it had rings on the tail, but they wasn't stripes. It was like a vertebrae coming through. I don't... Then... I noticed the uh, the bottom of the animal, the, the tail. No, the no, no. The, the the where the, where it come out of the base of the back end of the animal, there was like where its bottom comes out. It come out a long way, and then it had its anal at the end of there. It then went to the left. Uh, on its right, my left, um, and as it was going through just a little ways, it had to hop over something, but I couldn't tell you what it was. But when it hopped over, I could see a pouch from the back end of the animal, and the pouch went backwards, like this way. It's something I've never seen before. I was gobsmacked. I would... um, it then went out onto the shoulder of the road, um, I, by the time I got out onto the road, this animal was a long way in front of me. It was going around a big bend in the road. <clears throat> I seen it there for probably 
four to five seconds, and at the first, where it sat in that and looked at me, it was anything up to five to seven, eight seconds. Um, and another thing before I seen the pouch of the animal, when it moved away from me, the stripes went into its body. Like they just completely disappeared, except for the last four stripes on the back of the animal. Um, when it went around the bend, I got up to around the bend. Um, Dad was yelling out again, down on the track. The animal come back out, up the road further. Um, it done a 360 straight around and come back into where it come out from. I then ran up to there. Dad was still yelling. I ran up to there. I could see Dad's you. And the last part of the animal when it went, it was probably 50 metres past Dad Joe, and it ran straight across the back onto the other side of the road, then out of sight, but the tail was like dead straight, dead straight, yeah. And then we had some people up the next morning. Dad rang me up at, I must have been probably half past eight that next morning. Um, he said, can you come over to... Done Robin, because I want to take a couple of people up there. And I thought, man, no, I didn't really want to, but I had to go, but I had no sleep. I didn't sleep for, I don't know how long. Um, we then went up to the track. These people got out, had a look at the tracks, and there was, we know now, an expert tracker looking at those tracks. Um, <coughs> I told them about the story and that. Um, we then worked out what we was going to do, me and father. So then we had to buy cameras. So we slowly, over each fortnight, got cameras and put them out to where we seen this, or to where I seen this animal. Um, and then a year after that, I suppose, Richo? And it was a year after I put the cameras out because it took quite a while to save to get enough cameras. And after a year, I actually got a picture of something on a still. Um, that's when we sent the picture to Richo. We knew Richo was looking for tigers for a number of years. I think it was 26, 27 years or something. Um, when, we, when he got that picture, um, Richo nearly dropped to the floor, I think, so... And, Richo, you can take that. Thanks, Greg. From that remarkable um, story from Greg, when I first heard of Greg's story, I knew then that um, it would change science on the animal. In all my time of 26 years, I'd never heard anybody have a, such a close encounter. Um, but when Greg told me about this uh, photo, he just... He, <coughs> But him and Wendy uh, made contact. It was a family unit. Uh, it was a family link. And uh, we joined forces in 2016. Can I just say something else? Yes. I did count 11 stripes on that animal. When it moved away from the bush and the stripes went into its body, I counted 11 stripes on that animal. But I couldn't count them all. Yeah. <coughs> so Okay, so we've um, so we went from um, it was 2016. We decided to join forces, and uh, from there we uh, strategically looked at um, placing out cameras. Um, we um, we had to uh, ensure we had uh, the right corridor because um, I in the past had done some work in a few kilometres from the actual site, but not on that <coughs> particular. Corridor, and I call them corridors because um, you could actually work within five or ten metres uh, and not get a photograph because uh, the terrain is so thick. Greg will verify this, and you could actually lay out cameras and not get a hit. Um, but we strategically placed our cameras. Um, in the end, we had uh, four team working, and um, we had a couple of we had a couple of um, Hits, which you'll see on the um, the, uh, on the footage, and um, then uh, it was up until the 
14th of, uh, sorry, the 4th of November that we actually got <coughs> the video and um, progress from there basically. So we're still doing field research out there at the moment as a team. And so Richard also explained to the, uh, to the media why it's uh, taken so long to release it, what sort of protocols have you been through and what sort of uh, backup have you had to uh, <coughs> talk to the science of uh, the animal discovery? Well, we wanted to follow um, correct protocols. We just didn't want to put it straight out into the public um, on the, when we collected the uh, data on the 26th of November of last year because the footage we took was on the 4th. It was the 26th when we started recollecting our, um, our footage and uh, going through our uh, steers <coughs> and videos. And um, what we actually do... Greg and I, we split the SD cards in half. And I say, oh, I'll take this pile, you take that pile, Greg. And uh, hence we go home and we sit there and go through all the... And sometimes there's something like 700 images on each card. Um, but since then we've now changed it from <coughs> still image and video to straight video because uh, it was just too hard to work for us. Um, Consequently, uh, we um, yeah, basically what was the other question? I think Mark um, wanted to know um, the reason why it has taken so oh. long to bring out Sorry. is because yep. we want to follow the protocols and then give it to science, which we did. We just didn't want to throw it out to the public. We wanted to hand it to um, biologists and uh, zoologists to be able to analyse what we had actually captured and um, this I give credit to um, Mr Nick Mooney for doing so, um, for his kind generation. Uh, he actually took time and effort to come out on site with us and uh, to do this bit of uh, research with us and um, then we wanted to have security of the card through Murdoch Clark and um, and we just uh, then handed it to, um, once we got Nick Mooney's report, we uh, then handed through to Mark from PR side. So that is why it's taken protocol and length of time over that 12 month period. Um, you, you, you can't listen, we thought we might uh, play, the, uh, play the video so you've got an idea of what it is that we're, uh, we're looking at. <coughs> That's the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever seen you do. Joe. God. Is this just what you've given us? It most certainly is. It's exactly what I've given you. Those first couple of images are the pictures that uh, Richo drew. This is obviously Greg and his father Joe out in the bush.
these last images, ladies and gentlemen, are what Nick Moody asked uh, the BRT team to do, which is, which I was to turn when you shape out the shape of the body. Uh, the, Mick, the Mick Nooney um, known size target. <coughs> uh, that's all on your USBs, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to return to your positions, we can uh, do a bit of question and answer. <coughs> Me actually seeing the video, but it's not seeing the video, me actually seeing the actual animal. That's why we did this. Before you'd seen it, before you saw it that day, what were your thoughts about the, the Tasmanian tiger? Never believed him. Yeah, I never believed him. So how did you know to take in so much detail? How did you know what it was straight away? Marvellous. What you can, when it's in front of you, you take note. What's there? Did you any doubt at all? No. No, I have not. Not so a bit. Nick Mooney says a one in three chance. Yes. Uh, why do you think he, he's wrong? We're not saying he's wrong. Um, that's his entitlement. That's his entitlement to to say what he wishes to say, and we know that uh, academics will stand on, will, will sit on fences <coughs> and not say anything until there's such time. Yeah, it's right in their face. But uh, no, Nick. Nick would say that he he's been out in sight and he um, he understands the situation. Mr. In your opinion, what, uh, what makes the footage so conclusive that there definitely is a Tasmanian tiger alive in southern Tasmania? Because I've seen it. That's why. But this footage in particular, it's quite. I know grainy. what it is. It is it is grainy. We understand that, and it's grainy because of um, it was um, taken at eight pm at night. It was um, daylight saving time. Uh, the camera was uh, compensating to work between day and night, and uh, the and the the wide lens was working hard to pick everything up. Um, in that on that actual site, there's actually a steel in between that that hasn't been shown because it can't. We cannot verify that it is anything else. It's just that the marsupium knows, then there was the steel, then there was the video. So, um, but we 100% believe that it is a total thing. What, uh, what sort of factors in those images do you see that are distinctive of the, the thylacine? Is there a shape in the leg or, or the face or something like that? <coughs> size. Um, it's size and... Um, of course, even Nick Mooney has said, including Greg, who has actually seen, that the actual um, stripes will blend into the fur as it, wa as it walks. Um, it's the tail. Up that it's the tail. Okay? The tail. Yep. Yeah, definitely the tail. <coughs> the tail is a very long, it's very thick set. Okay? And it's got a little tuft at the end of it. No. If, Why not? Because it's too big. If, if it was a quoll, fair dinkum, quolls only go between five to seven kilos. That is a larger animal. And when it's your role, you set up the video? My role as part of the team um, was um, Greg Ned's assistance in formulating a way of capturing the animal on film. And um, was, as I said, it was a family link. Um, with, with, so were you trying to capture it 
extrude in real life too. It looked like there was a cage in there. No, that cage was there in, already in position. That had been out in the bush some time. And that, and where you see the um, the dead uh, wallabies there is where actual fact they were picked up from roadkill off the highway. And what we thought we might have done was it might have attracted carnivore in on location. But what it did, it attracted eagle. So there was a lot of um, eagles that come in getting a free feed. So, so why was there a cage there? Sorry, I didn't understand. We don't know. It oh, was just it was yeah, just no, out, it was it was just yeah, out in the middle of the bush. It was with where forestry had been, yeah. I have no idea. And this looks like an old forestry track, is that your understanding? Correct. It is. Yes. And, and it's a forestry track just past Medina. Is this in the Florentine where it's there? This is fifty Ks of Medina. I know it'd be unlikely to have a dog there, but is there something that distinguishes it? No, nah, no, nah, it's not a no. dog. Even um, Nick no, Mooney, Nick that? Mooney said that it's not canid. It's definitely not canid. And there's not a dog alive with a tail that long. And it's, but those are not the only sounds we've actually heard on the 18th of January. Greg and I have actually heard this thing calling out to us to warn its partner on the other side of the track when we were resetting up our cameras again because we go out every fortnight and oh. change the cards <coughs> and um, and the batteries and uh, on this particular day was another it's a different sound than that altogether it was a, a high call like a wolf call so um, I described that to Nick Mooney and he said well there's got to be variations between high and low and um, this animal will give a really high wolf call. I almost dropped to the ground. Greg said, that's the sound I've heard before. And after that call, straight on the upside of the track, was that bark from the other side. So it was communicating, saying that we're in location. Have you actually seen the animal in real life? I have not. No, ma'am, I have not. I wish to, but um, no, I haven't been fortunate enough. So are you saying you've heard two of them at least? Yes. Yes, and in one of those images there on the 4th of November, which you didn't see, um, was the video that was, in fourth, that was four kilometres from that other site where you've got the face, and on that image there was two, two faces in that image, but you were only shown one. So how would you describe, uh, how would you describe today's release of this footage? How would you describe it in, in terms of the hunt for the, the Tasmanian? Uh, it's exciting times for for the, the species um, and for Tasmania. Um, I only wish I could give you more, but that's why we have been doing this for the last 12 months. We were hoping to get more images, and um, but the longer we pro prolonged it, the harder it was for us to try and explain the story. And um, I thought, you know, it was through Greg that this is all... Uh, come about and um, and we've just stuck to the game plan of looking at that corridor and resetting cameras. Greg, can I just ask you when, what date your sighting was, your, the, the sighting that you had? The 3rd of the 4th, 2015. It was a good Friday. Yeah, good Friday. <coughs> and what, why were you out there? What did you Go for, oh, she, she said, why were we out there? Yeah. Dad was showing me old tracks. My like dad's um, worked out there most of his life, um, or a lot of his <coughs> life, tree felling. Um, and so, yeah, he was showing me different sort of places, what was there, oh, Christ knows how many years ago. Um, and, yeah, that's, mm, that's it, pretty well down to it. Joe, we haven't heard much from you. It seems like it's a family affair. Um, tell us about why you've taken part in this and, and why you do it. You'll have to speak up, Carl. Uh, no, I'm, I'm a bit deaf. What's your motivation? It's a family affair. Why have you decided to get involved with this? Well, I was involved right from the start. Yeah. Dad pushed it out to me. Could he describe yeah. what he saw? Dad didn't up. see I it. Him. He wanted to see a part of the old road and we just drove up and I said, I'll go up here and come back and meet you and bang. I could hear him hollering and <laughs> I knew what he was hollering, all right. Joe, have you seen a thylacine previously? When? Have you ever seen a thylacine? Yes, in the late, in mid-50s. Mid and whereabouts was that? Ellen Dale. Ellen Dale. I went over to the next farm and the next farmer watched it longer than I did. Right. 
<coughs> Did you think the, the Tasmanian tiger was extinct? I always knew the Tasmanian tiger still here. Always. They've never been extinct and they never will be. There's been six sightings recently, since Christmas, and I know they have true sightings. Joe, so what do you say to the sceptics? From the what? Sceptics. We can take her on the train. We're old enough. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, what are you, what's your day job when you're not hunting tigers? Um, I cut firewood. And Greg, um, you say you're not uh, telling us exactly where this sighting is. Why do you think um, that is so important? <clears throat> We're still working the area. Um, and we don't want the area disturbed at all. And we certainly don't want anybody there trying to cage it or shoot it. Yeah, there, there might be just a bit of Sorry. Could you just re repeat that for us again? Why is it so important to, to protect the integrity of this? Just the safety of the animal. The safety of the animal. Yeah. Have, you, have any of you tried to sell these images? No. No, no. no we have not. <coughs> that is why we've, the integrity has gone through Murdoch Clark and uh, Damien has handled all that our, our affairs for us. That is why we have not put it out to the public. We want this protected and... Um, we're looking after the species itself. Why did you come to a lawyer? Have you gone to the Tasmanian government to report th these sightings and videos there? No, not yet. We well, are. we didn't. We wanted the the car, We wanted <coughs> the images protected, um, basically, um, and to show our integrity and the safety of the car. We've given it to a lawyer, so that nobody can. Um, we so knew the lawyer could lead us in the right way. And that's He'd know how to put it out. And that's why we go. Well, we had yep. to have a lawyer to get the copyrights in here, so... <clears throat> we had no intentions of just throwing it out there like everybody else does to the public. Uh, we wanted to follow correct protocols and to have science look at our images and give a, a, a report. There's some science now where scientists uh, from, the, from Adelaide can actually take water samples and check the water samples for DNA to say if, if a pilot's been, been drinking in that water or not. Are there any water sources near this area where you say the thylacine has been drinking and would you collect water? We never water said water? that it's been drinking, but it would have been drinking. But yes, there is water holes there. Yep. We're fully aware of what report you're trying to say, but look, little water holes everywhere. I mean, how do you get your sample? <coughs> That's a big question. Do you guys accept, you know, looking at that video, there's something there, but, you know, most people would say it could be anything, really. Um, do you accept that? No. Yeah, what no. do you think? It's a being tiger. too sceptical or what? It's a tiger. Right. <laughs> who are the other zoologists you've shown this to, apart from Nick's name? Um, what, what was that? <coughs> Which I will answer that. I'm trying to think of his name. David Penelby. Yeah, David Penelby's seen it. And, yeah. and, and Nigel Pemberton? Brothers. And Nigel Brothers was the other biologist. What did David Pemberton think? I haven't... He sat down with Nick Mooney. They, they, I let them go and do their own research and and um, I don't think they've actually seen the footage, the stills. That's where the 30% come into it. <coughs> He's only just looked at the, the video. What's yeah. the tenure of the land? Who owns the land? The it's forestry. It's, 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 it's forestry. See whatever that's called these days. Yeah. It, yeah. And you can it's say that. it's about 50 kilometres from that area. That's correct. We wanted to keep that radius. Will you tell us if it's something like no. six or four inches? No. No. What was that? Nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> have you had any discussions with forestry? I mean, if this is, is this an No, we haven't. haven't we, we, no, no. we haven't talked to anybody apart from our, the site. Well, actually, Mick, Nick Mooney. That's and our lawyer, and that's who we've talked to. We have not talked to anyone else. Do you know whether it's an active logging area? Do you have any concerns in that regard? No, no, no. Look, they've been out there for the last 80 years with them logging out there. They're still there. Your, so, um, your dad's obviously a long-time believer. Could that have coloured what you saw? Could it nah. have been something else? Nah. You... No, <clears throat> no. No way. Are you going to keep looking out there? Yes. We're still researching. We're still doing our thylacine research. Um, we still have cameras. We have cameras in sight. 
and we're actively working at that location. That is why the delay. We wanted to get them more science behind <coughs> us to get to this point, and um, hence. Have you worked with Nick Mooney before, and this is the closest you've no. come to saying this could be a Tasmanian target? Um, I met Nick Mooney some 20 years ago when um, I handed him an albino, a photo of an albino, um, albino devil and uh, he was quite amazed with uh, Eric Guyler. Um, but uh, in that time, no, I've gone on my separate way, still doing my field research and um, it was only through, back through, getting someone to, it was actually a wildlife specialist on the thylacine, because Nick had done that for 20 or 30 years with Parks and Wildlife, to actually look at our <coughs> work. So, um, hence, no, that's, that's only, you know, the only connection I have with Nick. Do you believe there are thylacines elsewhere in Australia? I, in, I'd say Tasmania, I don't say mainland. People have got their own stories to believe. Mine is in Tasmania. Have you um, submitted this to the government or will you now or some sort of you know, government authority? I'll leave that for, um, I'll leave that for uh, Mark to answer because yes. he has. There he, are other groups who are out there searching for the thylacine and believe it to exist. Have you spoken to them about no, it? We've, no. We've talked to no one. We yeah. have kept this to ourselves. And could you just explain why you engaged a lawyer exactly? I'm not clear on that. To help the integrity of the SD card <coughs> to secure to secure the card so that no one can ever come back and say that we've been playing with the card. Okay, so sort of gave it to him and left it with, with the lawyer? That's correct. Uh, Damien has had that uh, since, uh, I believe, about the 19th of December. And have you your background, sorry? My background is that um, once I did my 20 years service in the Australian Army, I retired. I then did um, thylacine research for the last 26 years and um, I worked with um, the likes of uh, Eric Guyler, I've met with Eric Guyler, um, Carl Bailey's, <coughs> all those, and I've just now on my own, and I've been doing so for the last 10 years, and um, and um, hence um, with Greg, been the last over 12 months. And Joe, you are a former forester, is that right? Joe, are oh, you ex-forestry? Well, I worked in the bush all my life. Right. Yeah, logging and tree falling, just for me, 60 Jim. years more. Right. Greg, I've, uh, I've asked this of Richo, uh, but I'd like to get your opinion. How big a day do you think this is today, the leasing decision? Oh, huge. <coughs> Mate, it's probably the biggest thing. There's probably only one time bigger, and that was when it was sitting down looking at me. Yep. And mm. Nick Mooney said it's the best he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. And you would have seen a lot of thylacine footage yourselves on the internet, but from your opinion of everything you've ever seen, where do you place this? Well, I... Are you talking about that do other people any, have taken? Yeah, do you believe any of the footage that is out there currently? No, I don't. Um... <clears throat> but I think this is the best that's ever been shown on video. And so can you just tell us again, what were your thoughts about whether the Tasmanian tiger was extinct or not before you say that you saw one? Oh, look, I didn't believe in him. No, I did not believe in him. Simple. So how long have you been waiting to release this? Because today or tomorrow is a... It's funny you should mention that we had no intention of putting it out then. It was just the way it all formulated over the... Yeah, it was just a coincidence. It was, we talked about that this morning prior to you all arriving, um, didn't we? We actually said, hell, you know, tomorrow is thylacine day, basically, and um, it was just the way it happened. What's tomorrow the anniversary of the yeah, last that's, one? That's the 81st year of the anniversary of Benjamin, yeah. And who, um, who actually went through the footage and discovered these images and, and what were your thoughts when you saw those images? That was, that was as I said earlier, Greg and I would halve the SD cards, I'd go my way, he'd go his way, and we'd go and look at them and then we'd swap our cards over. And I got home at um, that night, at a, <coughs> at, at 10 o'clock that night, 
Greg was on the phone. I found it, I found it. And uh, anyway, I was still running around at midnight going back up and having a look at the, uh, the footage. Is that so, a full-time job for you guys? Is this a full-time well, occupation? It takes a fair bit of our time up now. Yeah, it does. The video? Yeah, no problem. Um, I watch it on a computer and then I put the computer onto my TV and I play everything at that and there was quite a few um, actual images in that SD card where there was nothing there at all. So I had to go back and then go back and then back until I actually picked it up and seen it and what was what triggered the actual camera. Why is it so important that the public know about this, about this footage and these images? Oh geez, I think it's very important. It's a Tessie Tiger. God. Are you married? What did you say? Um, yeah, look, sir, it's a very sad occasion. Greg's partner, <clears throat> and my niece, she passed here two months ago, so it's... Sorry, it's, I'll just move it yeah, um, she passed here a couple of months ago, so it's a pretty sort of raw on it. Yeah, yeah. Please forgive me. Yeah. Just if we took you going back to the day where uh, John and Greg saw the fire, they both saw it. Is that right? We're not the story, right? The what? Sorry. They both saw it. No, only Greg, Greg saw it. Sorry. Only Greg. Yeah, saw it. Right. it was. Yeah, it was. Pardon? Did you have heard it? Is that right? You heard the barking of it? No. No. No, he didn't hear a barking on that day. No, not that day. No. no. It was it was through oh, I never heard a barking. On the third of April video, it was through that? Joe that actually roused it out of the bush into Greg's. <coughs> I see. So he's seen he's heard it previously, then Greg saw it. Yes, he's heard. Yep, he's heard. Yep. Now, we've all heard the thought we've all heard it. Right, but right. not the money in our yeah. brother, mate. Yeah. Back to when you saw the image, yeah. um, what, what was your reaction when you saw that? And did you think... Wow. Oh, yeah, wow. That's it. That's mm. it. It must have been pretty hard to keep this secret this whole time. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, it is. Very, very hard. But there has been little rumours getting out, which we didn't want getting out. Um, at the start of the year and that, there was a person on... The radio station, a Mr X or something. We don't know who the fella is. We ain't got a clue who the fella is. Um, but yet he knew more about this and what we thought he did. Uh, Nick Mooney has suggested it be opened up to you know more experts. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys think about that? And is that a certainly, a certainly, most definitely. We if that's what he hide. wants to do, yeah, definitely. We have nothing to hide. Everything most is... definitely. And you still have your videos out there? We do indeed. Cameras we have out there, yes. yes. Greg, you said that you... Precious little sleep on the night that you saw the father scene. Oh, geez, mate, that was three, four nights. <laughs> 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 yeah. He was shaking like hey? that when I saw you. <laughs> I didn't celebrate. I, yeah, I didn't celebrate. This thing was just constant, constant. You know, you, 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 you try to get a wink of sleep and you wake up thinking about it. And... You're used to having flashbacks now, aren't you? Yeah. He's having uh, flashbacks now on his yeah. original uh, um, encounter. I still don't believe it. I still do not believe it. But it was there. It was there. Greg and Joe, did you see it? Pardon? Did you see that? No, no, no. Tom, I got up on the, off the old road, up under the logging road. He'd gone round the corner. When I made that call, he'd just gone round the other one. So I, I'd have had it be then. <laughs> I had to get up over logs and boulders and... So you guys live in that area, in the Maydina area? Pardon? Do you guys live in the Maydina area? I live at Ellendale. You live in Ellendale. Greg lives at Ooze. Richard, how do the cameras work exactly? What sort of sets them off? How sensitive it's, it's, You can have a low or high, and we've had them on low. Um, we've... Um, they're um, motion sensitive, and they're... They're only a two hundred dollar camera. Um, I've got the specifications here if you wish to look at them. Yeah, how many did you? How many cameras did you set up across the uh, the area? We're at fourteen. Fourteen. Yep. We'd love to have more, but uh, it's.
cost and time restraints. Got your finance yeah, that's correct. Yes. That's right. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you very much for thank that. You. Thank you for your time and your interest. Thank you. Well